Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 10 of the Becoming CEO AF podcast. I am one of your hosts, Kimba Garcia. And I am your co-host, Amanda Bell. And today we have a very special guest with us and one of the new coaches of our warrior program, Rachel. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, Rachel. I did a song for you. Did you love it? <laughs> Loved it. Thanks. <laughs> So Rachel, this is our first time to have you on the podcast. I am super excited to have you here and to share with our listeners some of your story around some of, I guess, really one of the reasons why Amanda and I chose you to be one of our newest coaches, right? And to just go through a little bit of your story. For anybody listening today, this is going to be a beautiful podcast for those of you guys that may be struggling with some of the things going on maybe in your life, maybe in our society and the world right now, right? This podcast is about just how to choose joy. It is, you guys. And Rachel is a great example of anything that comes up in your life. You can always still choose joy. And so I, I'm with Kimba 100%. It's one of the main reasons why she was moved up from the Warrior Program into the coaching position because she's figured out how to kind of take control of her mind and her body and her soul and always choose joy and happiness around her and in the world no matter what comes up. She is a great example and I'm going to let her explain exactly how she's done that and kind of a little bit more of her background, how she went through life at a young age to her young adulthood to now where she's at currently and how she's still continuing to find joy in her everyday routine. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you guys having me on today and having the opportunity to speak to everyone. Um, so I started my journey actually in England. I'm, I'm from England. And um, as a young adult, I decided to join the military. And I was in the Royal Air Force for six and a half years as a canine handler. And um, as a canine handler, I deployed to Afghanistan. And while I was there, I, I was searching for explosives with, um, uh, with, my, with my canine partner. She was awesome. Her name was Izzy. She was a great dog. And we were out there for almost seven months. Um, it was a huge, huge, um, significant part of my life, which is why I'm really starting here. Because for me, this is kind of where my, my life began, because it's the most significant um, event that happened to bring me to where I am today. And um, there, I, I was having a great deployment and everything was going swimmingly. And while I was out there, I was with a great, a really great team of, of people, a really great team of soldiers. And um, unfortunately, um, towards the end of my deployment, the team of soldiers that I was paired with, um, they ended their deployment early and I was attached to another unit. So while I was with this other unit, they weren't quite familiar with me as a canine hander. And um, we were going out on the ground one day and something pretty terrible happened on this one particular day. And um, I was out searching with my dog and she was, it was a long, long day. It was super hot. I mean, you have to imagine out there that it's, you know, it's almost over hundred degrees every single day. You're carrying a lot of weight on your back. You, you're responsible, not just for yourself, but for your dog. Um, and also for the team of, um, of guys that you have with you, the team of soldiers that you have with you, you're responsible for their safety or, and each other's too. And, um, and on this particular day, um, I was searching with my dog and I believed that I had searched enough for us to be able to pass through an area safely. Um, and I didn't. And um, I actually missed um, a buried bomb. And subsequently somebody stepped on that, what I, on the bomb that I had missed. And um, from that day to this, and I'm really kind of condensing this story, really. Um, from that day to this, it was the most significant part of my life um, right now because it was traumatic, not just to me, but to everybody that was there, to the dog, to anybody that could remember that one specific day. Um, and we all had a choice to make after that day where we were going to go from here and how we were going to recover. And because other people were injured and because... Um, it was something that could have been avoided if I had been better at my job, if the, the, 
day had been a cooler day or if you know if all of these other circumstances had been different then um you know it it, it i feel like a part of that rested on me as and, and my responsibility and so we had a choice to make then that we're either going to use this trauma and let it destroy us or we're going to use this trauma and use it to build us and for the longest time after this event um i didn't i didn't use it in a positive way at all you know i was um i had no way to understand what I was feeling. I had nowhere to put this guilt. I did loads of crazy things that I would normally do as, as an adult before I went out to Afghanistan. It was, um, it was a really dark time for me, a really, really dark time for me. I did something super crazy. You know, I, I married somebody that I'd only known for a few months. You know, we had, you know, my, my husband at the time, he was, um, he was in Afghanistan with me and, and he was there directly after the incident that happened. And we kind of had this trauma bond and, and you, you do things that you're not mentally aware that you're even doing that are not normal. Does that make any sense? I don't know if that really makes much sense. It does. It does a hundred percent. And I, I think, you know, for the most part, a lot of us have all been in a similar situation where something traumatic has come up and, uh, and we move based off of those feelings or emotions and not really um maybe not in a direction that we would have moved if we weren't in that place i just think your story is 100 percent one of the most beautiful stories i've ever heard um and i do appreciate you sharing that so much because i know sometimes that can peel open a, a wound that's already healed and you do it so well and effortlessly and also guiding and leading people in a journey of their life now from going through that. I think that's where you've taken yours. And I think it's a beautiful journey. And I'm stoked to be a part of that. How were you able to do that, Rachel, to, to go from behaving that way and feeling that way to saying, you know what, never mind, we are going to take all that energy and throw it the other direction. And we're going to choose joy. And it, after that, Rachel, if you don't mind, this is kind of a two part question, I guess, how do you do that? And then let's roll into your 100 day of joy challenge that you just did on social media, because that was really yeah. fun. Um, so, like I said, you know, you have a choice to make you whether it's um, something that's happening to you um, as an adult, whether it's something that's happened to you in the past, where, you know, as a child, as a grown person, you have a choice to make which direction you're going to go in. And I knew that the direction that I'd originally chosen wasn't just hurting me. It was hurting people around me. Um, I, you know, my, I have children. It was affecting my children. And I made a choice that I would never let myself be in this situation again. So I, I use this as my, and I say this really, um, I, I use this as my, as my trigger, if you like, because it's metaphorically speaking, I never want to miss the bomb ever again, ever. So I use that as my driving force in everything that I do. I want to move forward in, in my life. I don't want to miss a beat. I want to be there 110%. I want to give everything, all of my effort, because I know if I do that, then I will have no regrets. I will have no guilt. I will, I can move forward and know that mentally that I have done everything that I can to avoid a situation that I didn't want to happen. And moving forward in that journey, um, it, the biggest part of this was knowing that you have to be internally happy. You have to find joy in something every single day. You don't have to enjoy everything every single day, but you have to enjoy something because otherwise, if you don't have joy in your life every single day, then what's the point of being here? You need to have a purpose and, and finding joy every day for me was just the ultimate purpose because yes you can have money yes you can have you know all the cars and all the things but when it comes to you alone and you're sitting there with your thoughts if you don't have joy if you're not thinking through things that you are grateful for if you can't find just one thing in your day that that brings you happiness you have nothing to share you have nothing to give back because you're basically an empty an empty vessel so that for me is how I have brought that into my life by choosing this path, the right, the, what I think is the right way, healing from a trauma and using that trauma to bring myself joy because 
I know I never want to go back there ever again. So I choose joy every single day. I love how intentional you are, Rachel, about just making it a choice, right? Is it's, you know what, there may be some things during some days that kind of suck. But the Becoming CEO AF mindset is about choosing joy, choosing gratitude, and choosing to look up and say, I, I revert back to the sun licking my skin. I'm like, man, if I have nothing else today, the sun's licking my skin, baby. Like, we yeah. here, right? We are here, so we have opportunity. And then, Rachel, you rolled that intention over into your social media challenge that you shared with the whole world, and you let us all watch. You choose, intentionally and choose joy every single day of your life for 100 straight days. And on the 100th day, you did something I thought was wild AF, girl. I was like, whoa, with no notice to even those of us closest to her, did this girl do something wild? So let's jump into that really quick. No, this was so great. So um, my best friend, um, she's she's really close friend of mine. There's a there's a there's, there's three of us together. We're really close friends, and uh, we all decided that we were going to embark on a hundred days of something. So a hundred days of anything, whether it was hundred days of moving your body, a hundred days of of eating good, and um, and I was thinking, you know, I could I could do that. I could move my body for a hundred days. You know, we I do it most days anyway. It'd be easy. And then I thought. I don't want to take some, I don't want to take the easy route. So I, I'd been working on myself internally all this time. And I thought, why not expand this into doing a hundred days of joy? And, um, and without even, in, without intentionally um, realizing it kind of exploded and um, it kind of affected more people than I realized that it would before when I, you know, when I started day one, I mean, my, it went from, you know, tiny, tiny little things every single day, finding something to be grateful for and just, and sharing that with the world. I am grateful for you know, my kids that are doing their homework. I'm grateful for, um, you know, I took a nap today. And I mean, that was the joy that, I mean, some of the things were really small and some of the things were huge for me. I mean, on these, some of these days were, you know, everybody has dark days and everybody has days that they don't want to get out of bed. And everybody has days that they are really struggling um, to find a way to move forward and put that one step in front of the other. And, um, and for me, this was a great way to have no excuses because going back to my trigger, you know, I didn't want to miss a beat. I committed to this. So I'm going to see this through to the 100 days. So um, I had it in my head that I wanted to do um, a parachute jump on my 100th day. I had not booked it until a couple of days before because I wasn't 100% convinced that I wanted to. And um as the time was coming closer, I thought, do you know what? I'm here for a reason and I am really scared of heights <laughs> and I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it, but I knew that I would enjoy spreading that joy of that day. Well, however, that, however that day came, whether I hated it or loved it, the process of doing those hundred days and just being able to just have that freedom and that bravery to just sit on the edge of the airplane and just be thrown out with another guy it was just the most overwhelming experience I'm and sure. then landing and realizing that after I landed it wasn't just the joy of just free falling and having a parachute and that was the cool thing it was the joy of knowing that I just ended a hundred days or just a hundred days of doing something intentional that I didn't want to stop. I want to do this every single day. And that was the best part of doing that jump. I'm, I just didn't want to stop. I do love that so much, Rachel. Also, <laughs> side note, I did not know that Rachel, Miss Military over here, was scared of heights and still chose to jump <laughs> I out I didn't either. Of you Talk forgot that part. Yeah. Talk about yeah. pushing your I, comfort I get though. jelly legs climbing up a ladder. <laughs> I got jelly legs. And that's what's so beautiful, though, Rachel, is you can continue to do this every day. Yeah. We can continue to choose joy every day. And so moving into being a coach for the Warrior Program, what we asked our coaches to do was to come up with a slogan because we wanted them to have T-shirts that were branded to their pods. And Rachel's slogan naturally is joy is everywhere. Joy is everywhere, you guys. Joy is and everywhere. you can buy her merch line with CEOAF.com. So, like, I'm a huge supporter. I've actually already got my T-shirt coming. Yeah. So I just want to share that in advance. If you guys, any bit of inspiration and you want to spread joy, man, go grab yourself one of those T-shirts for sure. But back on the track real quick, Rachel, <laughs> not only did she push her comfort zone, the 100th day of joy intentionally pushed straight through a comfort zone, which we preach on at CEO AF. Like, you can, you've got to get real 
good at being uncomfortable, you guys. Real good at it. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know if you heard her, but she said she did not expect this to just explode in the way that it did, to be able to hit as many people as she did and, and to be able to hit herself the way that she did to the point where she didn't want it to end at 100 days. And I think that's where we start to find a rhythm and a flow in life. Mm-hmm. And that's where once you start to find Yours is joy. You want to go for joy, right? And you start flowing down this joy, and you see yourself get knocked off occasionally, and you just can't find the joy. But you know what? My kids are doing their homework, and I am grateful for that. So there's joy there. And you know what? I'm just going through this. And next thing you know, I'm going to jump out of a plane even though I get wobble legs on a ladder and keep going. I just think that's so beautiful. The video of her actually jumping out of the airplane is posted on the CEO AF Facebook page as well. If you guys want to go watch that because she is cute AF up there. You do. You get to see her. They video the whole thing. So you actually get to see Rachel go up into the plane. You get to see her up there like minutes before she jumps out. And to me, you looked cool, girl. I'll be honest with you. I thought you were calm. I was like, she's been planning for this. I mean, you can ask Chris, because I mean, I had a whole conversation with Chris while I was on my way to the airfield, and I was like, dude, listen, I am scared, I am afraid, I am super scared, and he was giving me all these breathing techniques, and he's like, you're just, you're going to do it anyway, so just enjoy it, just go and just do it, and I'm I'm hyperventilating when I pull up in the parking lot, I'm like, you know what, I'm here now, so as soon as I got there, as soon as they suited me up, I was like, there's no way out. I've, I'm, I'm doing it. This is happening. So don't try and back out of something now because it's too late. It is too late. It is too late. No, all of you that know CEO AF, you know that Chris is one of our other warrior coaches. Um, so I just love that Rachel called Chris, the other warrior coach, to say, dude, walk me through this because I'm getting a little shaky. And she took her emotions and said, you know what? I'm not scared. I'm not any of these things. I'm not fearful. In fact, I'm excited, Boom. which is CEO AF. <laughs> <laughs> if we've actually talked about that in some of our earlier episodes about how you can choose to go from anxiety or scared and just flip it over. You know what? I'm just going to be excited instead because physically it's pretty much the same reaction, right? Yes. The butterflies, the whatever you call that crawly feeling underneath your skin when you're like, ah, yeah. <laughs> And it works. It works. And I mean, I really, I was up there and I think I remember telling you after I jumped, I kept saying to myself, okay, I'm breathing. I'm breathing like Chris said, and I am excited. I am excited. Even though like my insides were like jumping beans inside, I was excited. But I mean, you know, it's it's just about being uncomfortable and there's just so much joy in pushing past a barrier that you really didn't know if you were going to or not. Once you've done it, you the self the self accomplishment that you feel and that and walking away from something and feeling pure joy in something that you've accomplished that day, whether it's something small, like, you know, if whether you you're you you don't have a clean house normally and you decide that you're gonna clean your house today, that's and find joy in sitting in a really nice clean house. It's it doesn't have to be jumping out of a plane, but finding joy in something every single day is just so important because we all deserve to have joy in our life we should all be living for joy I love that Rachel and guys this is the reason why we chose Rachel to be one of the coaches because what we know at CEO AF is that our businesses can never outgrow us and so when we look for the next coach of the warrior pod one one of the things that makes our program a little bit different is we didn't talk about this very much in this podcast we'll have to bring her back on but Rachel is also a multi-business owner She owns multiple different businesses since entering into the Warrior Program, actually took a business that she had dormant and blew it up to be one of her main income streams, already signing six-figure plus contracts with that business, plus has her other two businesses rocking and rolling. Physically, she's crushing it. Mentally, she's crushing it. She's a great mom. It's been incredible to see her take what in Rachel seven months ago, you were, I mean, you were strong seven months ago. Don't get me wrong. When you came into the Warrior Program, there was a little bit of confusion around some things and you just wanted to get the mindset and the intentions ironed the rest of the way out. And we've watched you implement, do that. We've watched you win for it. We've watched your business win for it. And those are the kind of people that we take and we make coaches like we have Rachel and Chris because they're not another, and I, this is going to sound how it sounds, but a guru on the internet. These are real people. They're veterans. They're multi-business owners. And these are people that have chosen to say, hey, man, I understand what it's like to juggle all the balls of the business, to raise kids, to go through trauma. And I still believe in intentionally creating my mindset, having the becoming CEO AF mindset where I'm not just the CEO of my company or of my home, but of my mind, body, soul, 
all the way through. That's what we believe in sharing with people. We've seen Rachel's passion for spreading joy to others, making an impact. And we were like, man, this is She's in the coaches club, right? And that is, those are the people that we look for. And what does make our program a little bit different is that these are real people that have been through the warrior program, that have taken the same system that we share with other people, have implemented into their own lives, and have started choosing to live with gratitude and joy and creating from that space every single day. And so, Rachel, I'm so excited to kick off your pod this week. It's her first pod that she's going to be kicking off where she's actually leading other business owners through the journey of building their companies, choosing joy from from A to Z in their life. And so, Rachel, thank you so much for just locking arms with us because I'm pumped. I am too. I'm excited. I am really excited. And thanks so much for the opportunity. I mean, COAF for me. I mean, like you said, when I first when I first joined the program, I was a little bit hesitant. And um, and you know, and I had my doubts because it was new to me and this kind of coaching program was new to me. But um, I think that if everyone just you know makes that step and just and just kind of falls with faith and just makes the decision, makes that choice to make their lives better and and have that pure belief that they if they do the work then it's going to work and it does work I'm living proof that it that it does work so I absolutely love it Rachel what would you say to somebody else out there because you just brought up a great point Um, I do think that people get scared of coaching programs I think that they are fearful to jump into something like this. I think for some people, it may be a fear of the financial commitment. For some, it may be time. For a lot of people out there, it's truthfully accountability. I'm sorry if that hurts, but some people are like, what? I don't know if I need somebody showing up holding me accountable to myself every day. And that's a big part of what coaching is. What would you say to people that are kind of right there on the edge of the plane looking to jump, girl? They're like, I don't know. <laughs> but exactly. And that's the thing. You don't know until you know. And it's super easy for me to say now because I've been through the Warrior One program already. But I mean, if somebody is sitting on the edge and deciding that they're going to join the One Warrior One program, you know, it's 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 costing you not to. So don't look at what it's going to cost you to do this. Think about what it's going to cost you to not do this. I mean, if you need somebody to be there, you know, coaching you through, you know, your life, your business, and, you know, not just things, not just finances, but that, you know, life happens when you have a business and personal things happen. And that's what coaches are for. And that's what you should be looking for in your coaches is a guide and and a cheerleader and somebody to be able to to you know battle solutions with you through different problems that you might have to be able to get to somewhere where you want to go and it's super important to know where you want to go and that's what coaching is all about for me no i love that so the whole thing that came to mind while rachel was sharing that you guys is so many of us say that we will die for our children and i know you guys have heard us say it time and time again including on this podcast but at the end of the day are you willing to live for them are you willing to live for yourself you're willing to die for all the people that you love around you but are you willing to live for them and if so it's time to take that jump right out of that plane (laughs) it's time to go fun fact we got at least one of amanda's kids in the podcast studio with us right now so Being the example, I love it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 10. And follow along. Make sure that you're following our podcast, guys, because we are going to continue to bring on wonderful, awesome people like Rachel, continue to share their stories, and help you guys on your own journey to becoming CEO AF. We'll see you later. Bye.